Good afternoon, dear colleagues. I would like to present you the report synthesis of weakly agglomerated manganite nanoparticles from solutions and their properties. Nanoparticles of ferromagnetic materials have physical and chemical properties which are different from such of bulk materials. Without stopping on the reasons, it should be mentioned that such nanoparticles have already found uh, numerous applications in engineering, especially in, uh, uh, sorry, in magnetic recording systems, magnetic sensors, etc. However, nowadays researchers can determine some possible medical applications of such nanoparticles and I would like to tell about the main of them, such as uh, drug delivery, uh, magnetic resonance imaging and hypothermia. Today I, would, today I would like to talk only about hypothermia treatment and few words about it. Uh, there, we, there are classical and magnetic hypothermia. Classical hypothermia is a local heat in oncological tumors to 43-45 degrees above zero uh, under the action of an alternate magnetic field. At these temperatures, uh, tumor tissues destroy and healthy tissues are stable in this temperature range. However, classical hypothermia have uh, some has some important problems, such as unwanted hidden tumors, a risk with overheating the surrounding health issues, and uh, hidden the deep seated tumors is impossible. Uh, therefore, in 1994, Professor Jordan from Germany suggested uh, to use uh, magnetic nanoparticles in hypothermia treatment. In this case, magnetic nanoparticles were previously injected into the tumor, and such tumor was affected by the magnetic field. Uh, the particle's temperature increased by the absorption of magnetic energy and such heating was local. However, to be successfully used in uh, hypothermia treatment, uh, such magnetic nanoparticles must meet uh, some requirements and I would like to emphasize on the most important, such, such as they must be weakly agglomerated and have small size, approximately 20-15 uh, nanometers. Uh, such particles should exhibit superparamagnetic properties to prevent the agglomeration uh, in the absence of magnetic field and uh, the most important such particles must effectively hit under an alternate magnetic field to necessary for hypothermia treatment temperatures and they should demonstrate high specific loss power values. I'd like to emphasize that uh, the heating temperature must be controlled very exactly. Nowadays, most of scientists studied uh, the magnetite nanoparticles as promising mediators of hypothermia treatment. Uh, this material is biocompatible with living tissues, however, in uh, relation to hypothermia, it has some serious drawbacks. At first, it partially oxidizes in the air uh, that uh, leads to changing its magnetic parameters. And uh, the most important, uh, that it has high Curie temperature value of 508 degrees above zero. I would like to tell you why it is important. Uh, magnetic nanoparticles uh, heat up in the magnetic field when they are in uh, magne magnetic state. In the case of magnetite nanoparticles, heating is, uh, is uncontrolled to high temperatures because of its high Curie point, and such heating uh, may, lead, may lead to overheating and, uh, as consequence, destroying the healthy tissues. Uh, therefore, uh, in our department, uh, together with magnetite nanoparticles, manganites began to be studied several years ago. The main advantage of these materials uh, is uh, that their Curie temperature depends on the chemical composition and we can uh, change and control it in the necessary temperature range. Uh, such approach allow, may allow uh, controlling hidden temperature in necessary temperature range without any additional thermoregulative devices. Uh, I would like to tell you that in contrast, in contrast to spinel structure, the crystallization energy of perovskite structure is much higher. It means that during the synthesis uh, we always obtain uh, an amorphous product and to obtain crystalline nanoparticles necessary, the, uh, the additional heat treatment is necessary. 
It may lead in growth and agglomeration between individual nanoparticles. That's why um, an important task uh, is to find optimal synthesis conditions and synthesis method to obtain uh, uh, weakly agglomerated nanoparticles with necessary properties. It should be mentioned that previous investigations show that not all methods are suitable for obtaining manganite nanoparticles. For example, uh, during precipitation from aqueous solutions, we obtain an amorphous product and formation of the crystalline nanoparticles is multi-stage process. Uh, finally, we, uh, finally, researchers uh, obtained crystalline nanoparticles at temperatures that uh, much higher than 1000 one degrees above zero and uh, such nanoparticles such nanoparticles are uh, large and violently agglomerated and that they are not suitable for medical applications. Uh, in this case, uh, methods of synthesis with uh, using different non-aqueous uh, solutions or uh, organic compounds are of particular interest. I would like to tell about three such methods. The Zoldel method, uh, precipitation from non-aqueous solution, and pre precipitation from microemulsions. Uh, shortly about this method. Uh, in the cases of Zoldel synthesis and precipitation from non-aqueous solutions, uh, there are complexation reactions between uh, organic compounds and metal ions. And nanoparticles uh, obta obtain, are obtained during the composition of such complexes. Uh, moreover, the higher viscosity of uh, organic compounds uh, may allow preventing uh, some uh, interactions between nanoparticles in solutions. In the case of uh, microemulsion, uh, synthesis process uh, takes place in a so-called isolated nanoreactor which is formed by surfactants and uh, have uh, a limited volume. Uh, and uh, the particle size of uh, such nanoparticles uh, will, uh, will uh, depend on the parameters of such nanoreactor and on the surfactant structure. That's why the aim of our study was synthesis of weakly agglomerated manganite nanoparticles via three different methods and investigation of their morphology and properties. At the fifth stage, we obtained uh, manganite nanoparticles via Zoldel method. Uh, the sham is uh, shown on this slide. Uh, the main uh, result, according to X-ray data, is that our formation of our nanoparticles is one-stage process. It begins at uh, 600 degrees, and finally we obtained uh, single-phase product at uh, 800 degrees uh, above zero. I would like to tell you that previously in 2010 in Czech Republic such nanoparticles were synthesized via all gel method. However, such nanoparticles were large and violently agglomerated and uh, scientists suggested doing mechanical grinding. Uh, they obtained nanoparticles with different shape and wide size distribution from 10 to 100 to from 20 to 120 nanometers. And uh, we tried to change synthesis conditions, especially pH value of DEL, and uh, found optimal uh, conditions at which um, we obtained nanoparticles which were slightly agglomerated. And uh, in compar compared to Czech nanoparticles, uh, they were a little better. At the second stage, we obtained nanoparticles by precipitation from diethylene glycol solution according to the sham on the slide. Uh, the main result of uh, the synthesis is that this process is also one stage. We obtain an amorphous product uh, uh, during the synthesis, but um, uh, single-phased crystalline nanoparticles began uh, forming at... Oh, at 600 degrees, and finally we obtained crystalline product at 800 degrees. 
At the third stage, we obtain uh, manganite nanoparticles from reversal microemulsions. The main synthesis details you can see on the slide. As in two previous methods, uh, crystalline nanoparticles uh, formed in one stage and finally uh, crystalline product we, we obtain also at 800 degrees above zero. Uh, and uh, it uh, allow us to talk that uh, all these methods allow decreasing synthesis temperature and all these methods allow obtaining nanoparticles in one stage and it is very important. Morphology of all synthesized nanoparticles were studied using TAM microscopy and uh, on this slide you can see uh, corresponding micrographs. And uh, we also calculated average sizes and particle size distributions for all, uh, for all samples and according to obtained histograms uh, you can see that all particles have narrow size distribution and average size of uh, nanoparticles uh, is uh, in the range of uh, 20 to 40 nanometers. Magnetic properties from, for all samples were studied and main magnetic parameters are summarized in the table. Uh, as you can see, uh, magnetic properties significantly depend on the synthesis uh, method and also on the morphology of nanoparticles. With a decreasing of uh, the particle size, uh, magnetic properties also decrease. Uh, based on obtained nanoparticles, we prepared magnetic fluids uh, with the aim of studying the heat inefficiency in the magnetic fields and corresponding curves are on the slide. We also calculated uh, specific loss power values uh, that are summarized in the table. Uh, as you can see, uh, heat inefficiency is significantly depends on the magnetic properties, especially on the magnetization, uh, and uh, it decreases uh, with decreasing the magnetization of nanoparticles. Very important result is that in some time, a heat and temperature of such nanoparticles becomes stable become stable and it is very important uh, that it may allow uh, to prevent uh, overheating and destroying healthy tissues in hypothermia. Our colleagues from Institute of Oncology investigated some cytological properties of such nanoparticles and the main result is that manganite nanoparticles have uh, low, toxic low toxicity uh, and uh, some additional useful properties, for example, uh, uh, some antioxidant and antiviral activity. It allows us to tell that such nanoparticles may be used for further in vivo studies. Also, we have won some positive result. Uh, such, than, such magnetic fluid uh, was uh, investigated in vivo. Uh, our colleagues from Institute of Oncology injected such nanoparticles into the tumor and uh, after the action of a magnetic field in some time tumor growth was stopped. It is positive result that allow us to conclude that uh, such approach to use manganite nanoparticles in hypothermia treatment is very promising. As a conclusion, I would like to tell that uh, all methods uh, are suitable, all three methods are suitable for application to obtain uh, weakly agglomerated nanoparticles, but uh, we must take into account some methodological uh, features and uh, synthesis conditions. Thank you for your attention.
our, uh, in our case, um, we uh, there are investigations that um, uh, take place Stoner Wolfhardt mechanism, hysteresis losses. Yes. Uh, Superparamagnetic nanoparticles means that in the magnetic field they uh, behave as ma magnetic nanoparticles and uh, without magnetic field they behave as paramagnetic nanoparticles. When we apply magnetic fields uh, there is some hysteresis and um, uh, in this case uh, stoner wolfhardt mechanism uh, is responsible for heating. And uh, there is, uh, I don't use this data in my report because uh, I uh, emphasize on the synthesis of nanoparticles. Uh, we have such magnetic parameter as blocking temperature and uh, blocking temperature um, for manganite nanoparticles is near the room temperature. It allows us to uh, shift the temperature region in which nanoparticles uh, are magnetic in um, temperature range which is near the room temperature. SLP and SA is the same in the case of hypersamia. It's the so same and Thank you.